Hello everyone. This is our seventh session on infinite sequences. In this session, we will be discussing the topic skew's theorem. Let's frame skew's theorem through a figure. Suppose I have a vertical axis here and a horizontal axis here. In the horizontal axis, I will be plotting natural numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And in the vertical axis, we will plot uh, the va values, uh, we will plot uh, the values of the CS, uh, terms of sequences. So here I have three sequences, sequence A n, sequence B n, and sequence C n. And uh, here I have one L, so that I am drawing the horizontal line at height L. The peculiar, peculiarity of sequence A n is that it converges to L. So I can draw A n like this. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, etc. It converges to L. Now, peculiarity of sequence CN is that it also converges to L. So, um, and I, I know that sequence, uh, this A, the terms of sequence CN are greater than that of AN. That means CN is greater than AN. So, suppose my C1 is here, C2 is here, C4, C5, C6, so sequence CN also converges to L itself. Now, the, the, the sequence VN is such that, this Bn is between An and Cn after some terms. So first few terms may not be between An and, An and Cn, but after some time, sequence Cn lies between An and Cn. So uh, I will plot this sequence Bn with red dots. Suppose this is my D1. This is B2. So B2 lies between A2 and C2. B3. B4. B5. B6. B7. B8. Etc. So the question is that uh, we are given that limit of A n is equal to L and limit of C n is equal to L. Then what about limit of B n? Whether sequence B n can diverge? Can it diverge? No, because it is skewed between A n and C n, and both of them goes to L. So it has no other way. Sequence B n has no other way. It has to go to L itself. This is what skews theorem states. So we can state the state skews theorem as this is skews theorem. Suppose there exists some, uh, say, capital N, a natural number, such that An less than or equal to Bn less than or equal to Cn for all N greater than capital N or greater than or equal to capital N. So after a particular stage, these sequences are uh, like this, a n less than or equal to b n less than or equal to c n. And limit of a n equal to limit of c n equal to l. Both of them have the same limit l. Then limit of b n limit of sequence Bn 
as n tends to infinity is equal to L itself. This is what Q's theorem states. We can use this theorem to find limits of some sequences. I will show you one uh, example. So, our question is that find limit of uh, n factorial by n raised to n. Okay, n factorial by n raised to n. We have to find limit of the sequence as n goes to infinity. Anyway, we know that n factorial is positive. n raised to n is also positive. So their ratio n factorial by n raised to n will be positive. So we can say that 0 less than n factorial by n raised to n for all n element of natural numbers. This we have. And I will, I will be using this. Now, next I am checking what is uh, n factorial by n raised to n. What is n factorial? Just 1 into 2 into 3, etc. up to n divided by n raised to n. So, we have to, we, we are taking product of n, n times. So, I'm, I will write this as n, n into n times for, uh, n etc. n. So, this is what n factorial by n raised to n. And I can write this as 1 by n times 2 by n times 3 by n times etc. n minus 1 divided by n times n by n. Okay. So, we have to uh, notice that each of these terms are less than 1. This uh, 1 by n will be less than 1, 2 by n will be less than 1, etc. n by n will be less than 1. n by n is equal to 1. N by n equal to 1, all other terms are less than 1. Okay, so if I multiply a number, uh, so I, I will show you, see here, suppose uh, I have uh, I have 1 by n here. Okay, and 2 by n here. This will be less than 1 by n times 1. Okay, so this is uh, this 1 by n times 2 by n is less than 1 by n. Again, I am taking one more term. 1 by n times 2 by n times 3 by n. This part is less than 1 by n. And 3 by n is less than 1. So, product of these 3 is again less than 1 by n. Similarly, we can say that 1 by n times 2 by n, etc. n minus 1 by n, then n by n, which is less than 1 by n. Or in other words, or n factorial by n raised to n is less than 1 by n. I need this one. So, what about the first one? n factorial by n raised to n is greater than 0. Here we say that n factorial by n raised to n is less than 1 by n. So, I can write 0 less than n factorial by n raised to n is less than 1 by n. So, consider this as a n, this one is b n, and this one is c n. If a n and c n goes to the same limit l, then b n has to go to the same, uh, that limit itself. So, here what is limit of a n? a n is always 0. So, limit of a n is 0. What about limit of? cn 
this is limit of 1 by n as n tends to infinity and we know that it is equal to 0. So limit of a n is 0, limit of c n is also 0. Therefore, by Q's theorem, we can say that limit of n factorial by n raised to n is also equal to 0. Okay. Or uh, I will show one, one easy example. Uh, find limit of sin n by n as n tends to infinity. What is this limit? We know that sin of something, whatever be uh, the argument, sin of something will lie between minus 1 and plus 1. So we can say that minus 1 less than or equal to sin n less than or equal to 1 for all n. Multiply throughout by 1 by n. So that we will get minus 1 by n less than or equal to sin n by n less than or equal to 1 by n and minus 1 by n goes to 0, 1 by n goes to 0. Again by Q's theorem, we can say that limit of sin n divided by n is also equal to 0. So, Q's theorem can be used to uh, find uh, limits of sequences whenever uh, whenever we know the limits of a n and c n and if both of them coincide limit of b n will also be the same. Now we have one more theorem this is an immediate consequence of skew's theorem. This theorem says that if limit of mod a n as n tends to infinity is equal to equal to 0 then limit of a n equal to 0. If limit of mod a n is 0 then limit of a n is 0. How can we prove this? The hint is that we can use q's here. So notice that um, if for any real number a if a is a real number minus of modulus of a is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to mod a. We know that the value of mod a is either a or minus a. So, if a is any real number, minus of mod a will be um, less than or equal to a and it will be less than or equal to mod a. So, instead of a, take a n. So, we have minus a, no, minus of modulus of a n less than or equal to a n less than or equal to modulus of a n for every n element of n whatever be the value of a n we have this inequality and we are given that modulus of a n goes to 0. If modulus of a n goes to 0 modulus of minus a n will also goes to 0 because we know that limit of c a n is equal to c into limit of a n. Okay, so this is minus 1 into modulus of an, modulus of an goes to 0. So, minus 1 into 0 which is again 0. So, this goes to 0 and mod an goes to 0. Therefore, by skew's theorem, an should converge to 0. This, this is how we prove this theorem using skew's theorem. So, we will move, move on to the next theorem, theorem 4 of uh, 4 in this section, uh, section in, the, in our next session. So study, study till, uh, st study well up to this portion and uh, we will discuss the next topic in the next session. Thank you.